Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf, where I teach you about coding and the world beyond. Today, I wanna to talk about something that's not JavaScript. I know, hold on to your pearls because it's gonna get weird. Today, I wanna to talk about Rust the language. It's been a language that I've been learning about in my free time. I don't know what my free time is, but somehow I have free time and I am so excited about Rust. Uh, let me tell you why. So Rust is very much unlike JavaScript in that it is, it is a statically compiled language similar to C, C++, Go, all these static languages with compilers that once you run on your code say, ew, why'd you write this piece of garbage? No. Compilers don't do that. Compilers are your friends and your confidant on helping you write better code. Rust is a new language. I want to say around five years old. I'm sure you can correct me in the comments. And what's so exciting to me about Rust is I've always been interested about writing code in C or C++. And C, I think, was made in 1971. It is older than me by a long margin. And the language C itself is hard because you have to deal with memory and pointers and all these other things. But what's scary to me about C and C++ is the ecosystem around it. When you write C, you're using the language, but then to compile it, you also have to use the compiler, GCC. Uh, and there's all these other meta things around C that you have to kind of learn to be a proficient and good C programmer. So yes, you have to learn the language C itself, but you have to learn their version of package management, their version of compiling. Like, there's all this meta stuff that goes around it that is a lot to learn, and I don't have that much free time to learn all of them. What I love about Rust is that it is a low-level language like C, but it kind of includes everything by default. What does that mean? So when you want to make a Rust program, so Rust language itself has pretty much everything that you need to try to Rust program built in. It has a formatter built in by default, chosen for you by the Rust core team, the compiler built in by default into the same CLI. Uh, it has a test runner built in by default and it has package management built in by default. They have this, they call their packages, uh, they're called crates, Rust package, a crate is kind of, uh, is what they call an NPM module to make that kind of analogy. I'm coming from this JavaScript perspective here for sure. And you can easily do uh, cargo create to make a new Rust program, add some lines to a TOML file, TOML being similar to YAML, just some configuration file and add a reference to a crate, a third party dependency, hit cargo build, and it'll just build your Rust program. And you are just off the races. Yes, it's still static compiled. Yes, it's a different syntax to learn. Uh, there's nothing more to learn, but everything's built in by default. And that is, in my opinion, the biggest strength of Rust and what makes it the most friendly, low level language to start learning because you don't have to worry about all these different projects that have loose relations to each other that you kind of have to learn the connections between. Rust, it's all built into one and through one standard CLI that you can then just use and not have to think about any of it. It is delightful. And you might be wondering, so one of the marquee features of Rust, so A, it's statically typed, it's compiled, um, it does not use garbage collection. So garbage collection is how some languages deal with memory usage. So most high level languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby use, and even Go use garbage collection where it's a method in which if you're making an array of a hundred values and let's say your array goes out of scope, there's a garbage collector that kind of comes around every couple of seconds looks for all these dangling references and cleans them up. And the upside of that is that you don't have to think about releasing memory for your program at all. The garbage collector does it for you entirely. The downside is you have to give pause to the garbage collector. As the garbage collector is coming through, 
it takes up some time to do all this memory management and clean things up. And while that's happening, your program isn't really running that much. And that's the trade-off. You don't have to worry about memory management, but it's not as optimized. Rust does not do garbage collection. It does its own memory management where you yourself, if you want to, um, you're responsible for the memory that you use. But what's awesome about Rust is that it has a ownership model. And, with, and this is unique. This is, I think, it might be fully unique to Rust in that when you write a Rust program, you write types for variables, but also underneath the hood, you're also assigning lifetime of variables in Rust. This is a weird concept, but essentially you program Rust code that has optional lifetime ownership of variables that at compile time with Rust will know uh, if that variable is being properly cleaned up or not. So at compile time, the Rust compiler can say, this variable that you're trying to reference is no longer in scope, and you're gonna get a error because you're referencing some memory that does not exist anymore. And this is the coolest idea because you don't have to worry about garbage collection, you also have a compiler telling you what you can do to make your code healthier. Uh, Again, this is kind of a high-level video just to share my excitement with Rust because I think it's so exciting. Uh, the type system is Rust is really cool. Um, it doesn't do object-oriented at all. It has uh, implementation. It has what they call um, traits, which are similar to interfaces in other languages. Um, and you can kind of use that to get some of those guarantees of, of inheritance with object-oriented languages if, if you want, but it's not really uh, parent-child. Ch it's more sibling-sibling to make some more sense, but you can kind of have some standardized um, interfaces that objects can conform to if you want to. They call, Rust calls objects structs, just to be clear with that terminology. And what's most cool to me, and like what actually got me into Rust recently, was all those Dino videos that I made. So Dino is a new runtime for TypeScript and JavaScript, and it's using V8 to run the JavaScript, but that entire V8 interface is wrapped in Dino, which is written in Rust. So all of Dino at its core is Rust. And I was curious, what does this code look like? How does it work? And then I lost a month of my life reading the Rust book. And that's also what's cool about Rust is that they have a lot of free documentation online. They have a whole 20 chapter book to give you a complete and thorough rundown on how to use and program in Rust. Very educational, also a great sleeping aid, because I'd read a chapter about generics before going to bed and I'd be out like a light. So free medication in that sense. I'm going to try maybe to make some videos about Rust, no guarantees, but I just wanted to share with you my excitement about Rust because I think it is the coolest thing I read about in a while. Uh, you might not know it, but I'm a bit of a programming language geek. I just enjoy learning about them. Uh, I might flub a few details, but I'm always trying to get like the abstract view of it without having the time to delve so deep into it. But hopefully this kind of gave you an overview about what Rust is and why it might be exciting. I'd be very curious to hear your comments down below. Um, and I'll hopefully answer them as much as possible. If you know Rust better than me, please educate me. Love to learn some new things. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week with a brand new video.